Mark McMillan was hired as the head baseball coach at Charleston Southern University last June. I talk one-on-one -on -one with the coach about what's going on right now with the baseball team for this edition of Quintin's Close-Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quintin's Close-Ups on Facebook. Coach Mark McMillan, welcome to the award-winning Quintin's Close-Ups. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Obviously, you are the head baseball coach at my beloved Charleston Southern University. You are a husband, a dad, obviously, as I just mentioned, the head baseball coach there. What biblical scripture describes you these days? Well, I, I, you know, I like Colossians 3.23, you know, really. Uh, and it's basically just, you know, if you do, if you do things uh, at your best for the Lord, then you have a good opportunity of putting your head down at night and, and just knowing that I put forth my best. It may not have been perfect, right? Uh, but, you know, it can allow me to reflect, uh, rest, and then come back hopefully the next day and, and improve. And so uh, it's the it's same verse I share with our team when I first got here. What are you improving now with your baseball team? What am I proving? Yes, sir. Um, you know, I think it's just that, you know, a group of, uh, a group of, you know, it's 40, about 45 to 46 when you take our entire staff of uh, right. all over the country can, can come together and work together, you know, for uh, a common goal, right? Whatever, whatever that goal may be for that day. And uh, I think that's one thing that I just love about sports in general uh, is that, you know, we're not all from the same area. Uh, we don't all have the same background. We don't all have the same skin color, whatever it may be. But gosh, we can come together and try to do something that's uh, fun, uh, you know, energetic, uh, but also allows us to grow. What is your common goal for this week for your baseball team? It's really just stay in the present moment. That's typically what we discuss, you know, because we're, you know, we're at our best when we're where our feet are, you know, and, and trying not to focus on what happened last weekend or what happened, you know, what's going to happen this weekend. Just, just be in your three foot world and be present. And uh, if we can do that, uh, you know, we have a chance to probably perform better, but also we're going to be more aware of our surroundings, our attitude, our energy, uh, which I think in turn, you know, we, we want to be bucks here. We want to have a belief. We want to be uncommon. We want to be you know, champions. We want to be selfless. And just if we can do the, if we can do that, be present, uh, then we'll get the most out of not only the day, but the week. You talk about your best. Let me talk to you about the double header sweep over UNC Asheville. You told reporter Jake Luce that you guys are ready to go. You also said that your team were needed to throw punches and throw a punch early and kind of get that icebreaker. What was that icebreaker for that game? Uh, I think, you know, the icebreaker was really probably ended up being, uh, you know, Houston Parker's home run. That was probably the one that just kind of let everybody know, okay, hey, we're here, you know, and and we're ready to go. Uh, you know, we just kind of Friday night, I felt like we just couldn't get that that extra hit, you know, that could kind of just get us going. And, you know, Hootie comes out, you know, hits our first home run of the season. And I just felt like at that point, you know, we were, you know, we were here and we were here to stay. Uh, but I thought, you know, it was important for us because the game really started very similarly to Friday night's game. And so we needed to throw a punch and then we needed to just continue to, to do that. So you'll hear that a lot in our dugout, you know, Hey, let's, let's throw a punch. Let's throw a punch. Uh, we had talked about the icebreaker in the team meeting uh, prior to, and so uh, I'm, I'm glad he did that. And, and, you know, you got your first home run as, as coach of CSU recently. What was the timing and the swing offs that you observed during that recent game? Well, he, you know, Houston's, uh, he's got a good swing, you know, it's just, you know, time, you know, good hitters have good timing. They've got good rhythm and, you know, it's baseball and uh, not every pitch is going to be the same mile per hour, the same speed. Uh, but I think he had a good week, uh, all week. And I felt like he had good swings Friday. And, uh, so he was just ready. You know, we, we talked to our guys about be on time, uh, get your best swing off. You know, that's what we want them to do. Uh, you know, I don't want to uh, – I'm not a big proponent of seeing them, uh, you know, give up bat speed. You know, don't don't slow down bat speed to hit a pitch. Let's stay aggressive. And, and he was ready. You know, he was on time for it, got a pitch a little bit up. Uh, and, you know, he was able to, uh, you know, to get it over the fence, which was, again, a good icebreaker for us. And what was that bat speed during the UNC Astro game? Where was it? Yes, sir. <laughs> well, we uh, – you know, we had some opportunities Friday night 
uh, that uh, we, you know, we just couldn't seem to, to get the big hit. Um, but, you know, again, this is one of those, you know, hitting kind of comes and goes. We're looking for consistency. And, uh, you know, Houston, who we, we call him Hootie, that's his nickname. You know, he had, he had a good week. A lot of our guys had a good week of practice. And what we were looking for is can they just carry that over? You know, it's kind of just trusting the work that you put in, right? And then uh, it sounds so simple, right? See ball, hit ball. And I yes. think in that scenario there, you know, Hootie saw it, trusted the work he had put in, and he, and he hit it really well, along with others, you know. And, and, and those were things that we were observing in the dugout throughout the games. And what type of icebreaker do you want to use tomorrow against Presbyterian College? Well, first is just, you know, we need to pound the strike zone. So we're looking, you know, Sam Massey is scheduled to start tomorrow. It'll be his first start of the season. You know, it's, can you just get in, can you just get up there and, you know, on the mound and, and pound the strike zone? And then, you know, from us, uh, you know, we're going to be aggressive. Uh, you know, can we put balls in play? Can we put balls in play hard? We call them quabs, quality of bats. Um, certainly when you're on the road, this is a challenge. So for us, it's the midweek challenge. Uh, you know, the nice icebreaker would be, can we score first? Uh, but, you know, they have some control of that as well. And so, uh, but, you know, when you, when you have the opportunity to swing first, can you put a run on the board? And then can your pitcher go out there and either do a shutdown inning or just pound the strike zone? Wow, that's just amazing. And let me talk to you, obviously, about Twitter, because I know you like Twitter a lot, and I'm on there. You know, twenty four seven, I guess. But you posted this on your Twitter page just recently, and I loved it. You have the choice not to allow the expectations set by limitations to dictate your vision and dedication. This might be a complicated question, Coach. But what happened? To those expectations that you had for your baseball team that were ultimately set by limitations. Well, I think you know one of the most powerful things that we have is you know what's in between our ears, right? It's our mind, and so you know we we talk a lot here about how we communicate, you know, our verbiage. Uh, we uh, we really try to focus on you know not allowing uh, the word "don't" to be used, right? Because when you say "don't," I think the immediate image is seeing yourself not doing it, and so it's the it's kind of the the story of the pink elephant and the white fox, right? So, you know, if uh, some, you know, hey, close your eyes, you know, think about a pink elephant for 10 seconds, you open your eyes, you're thinking about a pink elephant. Then all of a sudden they go, okay, now think about a white fox. Well, it's kind of hard to get that white fox in your brain. So that's kind of what, I guess, that's what that saying means more to me is understanding that uh, the power of how we communicate to ourselves, our thoughts become things. So somebody may say you have a limitation. Well, you don't have to necessarily believe that. I would listen, right, because we may learn from it. But how we talk to ourselves, how we communicate to one another, I think it allows us to maybe overcome some uh, limitations that either the players may have on themselves or, or maybe uh, uh, what people you know outside may think of what we can accomplish or do. So that's really – uh, that's kind of why I put it out there. And I'll say this, and this is a long answer and I apologize, but a lot of what I'm putting out there, I'm really talking to myself. You know, those are things that I reflect on and they hit me in the right spot. And, and I hope, uh, give me some balance. balance. And where is the balance when it comes to communication with your baseball team? Well, there's a lot of people that, you know, I can fight in, uh, you know, that uh, in terms of just, understanding how to communicate with them. I think there's a balance in, okay, you know, um, when can you kind of get on them? And then when do they need a pat on the back? And then, you know, can they understand that a lot of what we're doing as coaches, you know, I, I tell people I'm a teacher, really, you know. And so, you know, I'm passionate, so my voice may go up a little bit. Uh, but it's also, do they know that you can just move on past it? And, you know, Mike Bianco, who I worked for at Ole Miss, was really good at this. You know, Mike could say what he needed to say, may not be happy, but tremendous teacher. Uh, but if he constructed you, he could move on. And, and, you know, and I don't want the guys to think that, oh, they don't like me or, you know, we're going to focus on that. No, we're going to move on. And, and again, let's get in the present moment and, and let's let's move forward. So. You know, I think that's uh, one of the things that I really try to keep in mind you know, when I'm talking to not only the players, but really even our coaching staff and, and people that I come in contact with. Yes, indeed. And, and how do you dictate your vision and dedication for this baseball team? 
Well, the, the dedication, uh, is, is certainly there, you know, it, uh, uh, you know, this is not a nine to five job and I'm not saying that that's, you know, that's not dedication if you do that, but, you know, this is one of those, uh, positions that one we're fortunate to do. Uh, you know, I think, uh, in this profession, there's approximately 300, you know, positions that, uh, coaches can hold with my title, but then, you know, that means there's just a limited number of assistant coaches as well. And so, you know, we just love it. Uh, and, uh, you know, I made the comment, uh, I think the other day about my recruiting coordinator, you know, Anthony Izio, if, if right. he's not uh, going to bed at night thinking about recruiting and waking up in the morning thinking about recruiting, then, you know, I got the wrong recruiter, but that's the way he is. And it's because we love it. You know, we, we want to see our university, uh, to be viewed in a positive light and sports are part of that. Uh, but also we want our players to feel good about what they're doing. And so I think, you know, part of our responsibility is making sure that we are prepared for them. Uh, and if we're not prepared or we make a mistake, uh, Quentin, then, you know, we'll stand up in front of them and tell them. And I, and I think that's part of the leadership and that gives them some freedom to know that they don't have to be perfect as well. You know, we, uh, we play a game that is, uh, really viewed more based off failure than successes. And, you know, what I want to do is I want to try to focus more on the good. Absolutely. And how do you, are, are they actually comfortable coach? Uh, well, I would say for the most part, yes. Um, you know, I, I think there's uh, oh man, now you're diving into my, uh, my uh, mental skills part. <laughs> uh, I think you want them a little bit. I don't, I don't know if the word on edge is right, okay. uh, but you want them to feel like, you know, they need to go out there and perform, but you know, that uh, there's just an expectation, maybe a standard. And maybe that's probably the better choice of words. It's like, there's a standard we're trying to uh, reach, maintain, exceed. And so, um, yeah, there's probably some parts where maybe they're not quite as comfortable uh, but there's others where, yeah, I really need them to be, you know, I need them to be comfortable on the mound pitching. Right. I need them to be comfortable in the box hitting. Uh, I think defensively there's enough pressure there as it is alone, just because, you know, you got a ball coming at you at possibly a hundred miles per hour. I don't know. I just want to try to help them catch it. So uh, I, I think there's a good balance there, but, you know, just a little bit of, um, you know, man, can I, can I relax all the way? I, I don't know. I think it's kind of like with our jobs, right. you know, um, I think, uh, you know, uh, Jeff Barber wants us to be comfortable, but at the same time, he, he wants us to know that, you know, there's a standard here that's an expectation. And, uh, and so that keeps us on, you know, on, it keeps our antenna up. So it's a good thing. Absolutely. And I'm so sorry about the delay there in Zoom, but you, you talked about, obviously, your, your recruiting coordinator, and I know that he's a relentless recruiter, according to you. How relentless was he in recruiting this past year? Uh, did a terrific job. I mean, we, you know, I was hired on June 1st, right. um, and then he was hired approximately two weeks later. So, you know, there's obviously you have the returners that are here. Uh, but, you know, you're trying to add to it uh, just because we felt like, you know, we needed to do that. And, uh, you know, I thought he just did a fantastic job bringing the young man he in that he did. Since that time, uh, you know, uh, we had the early national signing day. We had the national signing day back in November. Um, you know, again, I give credit to him. And at that time, we had another assistant coach named Matt Dentdecker. You know, they uh, were able to go, you know, find young men that uh, allowed us to have, you know, the highest uh, ranked uh, uh, recruiting class in the Big South Conference right. at that time, which was, uh, you know, really good. I think at this point we're in the top 60 in the country, somewhere right in there. Uh, and then just uh, the continued enthusiasm to go out and, con and keeping uh, and keeping on in terms of adding players. And so, you know, we've. Uh, we attacked the high school ranks kind of early on, got some JUCO guys, and now we've been really focusing on some junior college guys. And, you know, I think as of today, right now, we got around 20, 25 to 26 players, uh, you know, coming in here uh, next year. Wow. And, and when I interviewed uh, Chad Holbrook for Quintus Tulsa, I believe uh, two weeks ago, he said that he was going to be aggressive in his, obviously, as far as scheduling. How aggressive were you with your scheduling this year? 
uh, as, as aggressive as we could be, you know, we had to step back uh, because of COVID and testing and, you know, everybody's financial situation is different. And so, um, you know, we had some other games scheduled if, you know, uh, with what you want to call power five schools, uh, but we had to step back because it just wasn't what was best for our university and us. And so, you know, we'll be as aggressive as, uh, as we can be. I think it's good. I think it's good that we play uh, the best competition we can face. Um, you know, this is a, a conference that typically is in a one big conference when it comes to, uh, you know, the field of 64 that gets an opportunity to play for a national championship. So, you know, you, you want to play good outside competition. It gives you an opportunity to, to see what you're made of. So I've never shied away from that. Uh, you know, uh, when I'm during my time at Pine Bluff and certainly at Ole Miss and, you know, we won't do that here. This year's schedule just was adjusted a bit. Uh, because of uh, the current conditions we're in with the pandemic and then financially, you know, what's best for our university. Yes, indeed. And what is your outside competition right now? Well, it's not, uh, we played uh, Boston College opening weekend. So, you know, that's a, uh, that's a school that's ranked in the top 25, uh, you know, got off to a terrific start. They, you know, they ran into a tough opponent this past weekend in Louisville. And then uh, we were supposed to play Ball State. Uh, you know, we went on a pause at that point. Ball State is a school that uh, I believe is in the top 25 now. Uh, it's having a terrific season, uh, which really just put us, uh, in a position to where we only had a couple more uh, out-of-conference opponents. And so uh, one being South Carolina. Uh, so we'll play them, uh, I believe, in April. Uh, and then that's really it, unless we can pick up a game at some point, maybe with COC or Citadel. But, again, that's all going to be dependent upon, you know, financially what can we do, where's testing at that point, schedules. And so, you know, usually you would see us probably play somewhere around 20, 24, 26, you know, out of conference games or this year, it's, 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 it's less. Yes. And I, I want to go back to recruiting and I might be asking a redundant question, coach, but let me ask you this. And you said this about the, obviously the recruiting coordinator on Twitter. He says he knows what his eye sees and understands the value of relationship building and straightforwardness. What did your eye see doing recruiting last year? Well, you know, you better be good at it because uh, you're seeing a lot of guys on video you know, versus the ability to, to go see them in person. And so, you know, uh, and video sometimes can be uh, a lot more and sometimes they can be a lot less, uh, you know, and not everybody necessarily has access to it, which is maybe hard to believe, but, you know, there's, there's certain things that, you know, we're looking from a pitching standpoint. There's certain things that we're looking, you know, from a hitter when we're watching video. Uh, you know, the great thing is, uh, you know, Coach Izzio and then, of course, Coach Rhodes now, who's our hitting coach, you know, they have a lot of contacts. And so, you know, the ability to get video if they need to see more, uh, you know, is possible. Um, and then, uh, you know, Synergy, which is a software program now. Uh, you know, it gives us the opportunity to watch, uh, you know, hitters, especially in the Juco ranks. Uh, and then, you know, uh, you may get lucky and see, a, you know, them on ESPN Plus or something like that. But, uh, you know, the that's critical. And I think it's been a key uh, part of our success in the recruiting phase at this time. And what is the value since recruiting took place? The value is you better have coaches that, uh, when they get on the phone with with uh, potential student athletes that one they know that the person they're speaking to on the phone is the same person that they're going to see when they get here and then can that coach uh, develop a relationship you know can he uh, find a different tone with that young man you know can he find the commonality can the conversation really just get away from baseball uh, you know in, in many aspects uh, and then I think more than ever uh, is just you better be straightforward. You know, exactly. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is delaying in the winter here, too. But what relationship are you and your team building right now with the players and, say, feature recruiters? Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, it, it's an everyday process, right? Because, you know, yes, we've been together for you know, approximately six months, but, you know, a month and a half of that, we were away from each other for Thanksgiving and Christmas break. And uh, it's a continued uh, building process. We're still learning new things. Um, you know, uh, how do we want to uh, 
uh, you know, be in the dugout. What you know, what's the information in the dugout? Where do we want certain guys to stand? But um, you know, but I think it's something that we understand that you know uh, we're continuing to help them uh, understand. Hey, what are we looking for on a practice day? What are we looking for on a game day? You know, we just finished a team meeting here. You know, and it's always hey, what uh, you know, we talk about the weekend, uh, and yes, it's easy to talk about. Okay, hey, we did this well. You know, uh, we need to improve here, but there's other aspects that come into play. That again, you go back to this comfortableness, right? Okay, you know, hey, we you know we probably need to make it a little bit more comfortable in this area. You know, hey, I'm good with what we're doing here, but even throughout the game, we are building relationships because we're teaching. You know, and uh, you know, you're trying to understand how to communicate. For example, with Coach Isio. How do you communicate with your pitchers during the game? Some pitchers don't want to be talked to. You know, what I mean, you know, others they want to. Some hitters, you know, may want to talk a little bit more. Others may not. So it's just an everyday process. Yes, indeed. And and from six months ago to right now, what other new things are you learning, Coach? Oh my goodness, uh, you know, uh, a number, and it'd be really hard to pinpoint. Uh, you know, all of them, but I think, uh, just basing it off of my experience where I came from and, and what I'm, where I am now, uh, first of all is, you know, uh, you're grateful to have tremendous support, uh, you know, from the administration, uh, and then your assistant coaches and then others that many don't get to see managers, uh, equipment, people, um, academic staff, strength staff, you know, um, because you're involved in all those, you just may not be physically there all the time. And so, um, you know, I recognize that, hey, when, you know, when Mike uh, at Ole Miss would ask me, hey, remind me of this, or hey, make sure you grab me to tell me this, that, you know, and he would say, you're not bothering me. And he was right, you know, but sometimes as an assistant coach, we're like, oh, gosh, I don't want to go in there because I might be bothering him. You're like, no, come tell me, come speak with me. Right. <laughs> so, um, but you're learning every day. I, I, I evaluate myself uh, very critically. You know, I, I, I listen to my words. I'll go back at times and be like, man, I wish I had just shared this in a different way. How am I standing during a game? You know, am I standing confidently or am I, am I giving off, uh, you know, uh, poor body language? So uh, all those things, uh, you know, come into play. But it's, uh, uh, I don't think there's a day yet where I've been like, Ah, oh, I knew everything that was going to happen today, and I nailed it. You know, uh, so you just try to take notes, take a lot of notes, ask a lot of questions, and uh, just again try to try to put forth your best each day. And how do you evaluate the players right now? Well, you're you know we use practice, and then certainly games. And uh, but you know I I do know that you know they definitely improved, um, and I know. Well, I don't want to say no. I think sometimes uh, maybe that word improvement can be shunned upon some, right? You know, I, you know, sometimes you know they might give that award most improved because maybe that means that you are down here and you've come up this way. But right. but we have improved. Um, you know, we've improved in 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 our attitude. We've improved in our mental skills. We've improved defensively and our strength. And these are things that uh, we try to make sure that they know. That you know, I think I'm going to go to the strength side. I think sometimes when we're going through it, you know, sometimes you don't realize the changes that you're making. And so you try to, you know, you try to touch on like, you know, a guy walks by and like, Hey man, you're looking, you're looking good today, you know? And like, they're like, Oh, really coach my kid. I'm like, no, Hey, you really do look good. You know, uh, it's kind of like when you're, you know, maybe when you're on a diet, you know, and sometimes you're kind of just cruising and you're just in the moment, but then, you know, somebody says, Hey, you look really good, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, those are, uh, you know, again, going back to communication, right? How do we talk to them? Uh, but I, you know, what I've seen here over the past, you know, six months is we are better. Are we where we need to be? No, uh, we're not, but, uh, but we still have room to get better. And I, and I told him this the other day, and it's, it's the truth. You know, I want to be better four weeks from now than we are today. And I want to be better, you know, from April 16th, four weeks later. So uh, it's kind of the, the never satisfied approach a little bit. Uh, but, you know, so that again, that's that fine line, right? You, you compliment them, make them feel good. But then where can I 
keep them in this, let's continue this learning mode, this growth mode. Oh, absolutely. And I forgot to ask you this because I was talking with Monty Lee, obviously with Clemson uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he said that they're testing their guys twice a week. Is that the case at CSU? Well, a week like this week, we would be tested twice. Okay, so we travel tomorrow, uh, supposed to go to Presbyterian College, so we'll get tested today. And then we travel again later this week, so we would be tested again. If we were only playing once this week, uh, meaning like on the weekend, then we would get tested one time. So it really just depends on what's your schedule for the week, and then what are your opponent's uh, testing protocols. So, uh, you know, I don't know right now just because it's further out, but, you know, when we go to South Carolina, the protocols may be a little different. Um, so I know for the ACC, it's different. Uh, you know, when we played Boston College, even though they were coming here, we had to test more. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we're just grateful that, you know, we're in a position here to uh, where we can do it. And, you know, we've been able to get on the field. And, uh, you know, I give a lot of people credit here, uh, again, from our administration, our pandemic task force, you know, to keeping the campus open, which is first and foremost, I think that's got to be number one priority, right? Um, you know, uh, from our athletic training staff to, you know, helping us stay on course, right? You know, wear your mask, yes. social distance, you know, wash your hands, and then the testing itself. Um, you know, it, it's expensive, it's costly, uh, but you know, they're allowing our guys to go out there and, and do something that they love. Uh, but I think in the end, too, will benefit them beyond their time here on the field. And, uh, and by the way, I love the Lightsey Chapel there at CSU. That's iconic here in this town. But you talk about finances a lot during this interview. How much have you all lost and how much have you all had to save because of COVID? Well, I, I don't know the exact figures when it comes, you know, to, to the cost. You know, I know that... Um, you know, we have to be smart uh, in our in our handling of our budget. And, um, you know, we're, uh, you know, we're a mid-major program. That's what we are. And so, uh, you know, when we had some discussions on, hey, how can we help us, meaning then, you know, not only baseball, but the entire athletic program in terms of what we need to do, you know, we're going to do that. And if that means that, you know, we can't go somewhere and play because, financially, it's not in the best benefit for uh, all of us, then I get that. And, um, but, you know, the, the positive to it also, Quentin, is, you know, there's other universities that, you know, they can step up and, and provide the assistance to maybe allow us, you know. So, again, I'm, I'm one of those that, you know, I do. I like to give credit where credit is due. And so, you know, South Carolina, you know, stepped up and, and helped us out a little bit more so we can maintain that game. You know, and it's a game we want to play. You know, we want to play, uh, you know, Clemson and ECU, any of the schools here, you know, within South Carolina. We want to play. Uh, we're too close not to. Uh, but, you know, I think part of, you know, our responsibility as head coaches and even as a, as a program here is it's not just about baseball. It's about, you know, all of the student athletes that are getting to do this and our university. So, um, again, I don't know, uh, you know, the exact cost, but I know that uh, we're in a position to play the game and, uh, and play a lot of games. And, and uh, my approach going into this entire year was just, you know, I just want to play. And, you know, if they had said you're playing 20, I would have been okay. If they had said you're playing 56, I would have said, okay. So, uh, so we're good. <laughs> Yes, indeed. And, and that brings me to my next question. Michael Jordan once said this quote, and you mentioned it on Twitter, work ethic eliminates fear. What work ethic are you guys playing as far as using to eliminate fear in the dugout and on the field? Well, you know, you try to, um, you know, can you, can you emulate practice, you know, uh, to where maybe it's a little bit tougher than, than the game itself. Okay, so here's one, one, I guess, simple example would be, you know, a lot of schools nowadays have what you call a hack attack machine. So this hack attack has three wheels and you can really generate uh, uh, some good speed with it. So, you know, if we know we're going to face somebody that throws good velocity, maybe like an RJ Pettit, right? Well, we can use that hack attack to create this velocity. So that's one way of, you know, kind of prepping them. Uh, you know, how do we do it? During a game, we, we keep uh, uh, 
a board in the game, and I don't know if anybody's seen it, but it's got some things on there that we're trying to accomplish. Uh, and so, you know, whether it's first pitch strike or whether it's uh, a web gym, which, you know, if you put a web gym on there, Quentin, it's amazing. Like now what do they see themselves doing? Right. Make a great play, you know, uh, a quality at bat for us. We'll keep up with that. So these are things that it's part of their preparation that they do during the week. Um, but then we can instill it in a game. Another thing would be we have the gold shirt. It's got tour day defense on the back. Well, that goes to the player that has what we would say is the best defensive practice or play during a game. So now you're you're creating maybe turning something you know that could be a negative, but they're kind of excited about it now, right? Like, and I, what I want is I want them arguing about it, right? I'm like, hey, why didn't I go get the shirt? You know, like, and one come up the other day, he's like, why didn't I get the shirt? I go. Right. Talk to your coach. Right. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, you're trying to, can you create this scenario of practice? But then also, but then during the game, for me, it's like, can you get them just to think about that? You know, it's like a pitcher. Hey, how many, how many three, two pitches have you made in your career? Coach, I've been playing since I was seven. So you've made a lot of three, two pitches. Yeah, you're right. Well, then don't make it any bigger than it is. See, I just use the word don't, right? Right. But, I wish I hadn't, but it's like, you've been doing this for a long time. It's just another pitch. So, you know, uh, Michael Jordan's right, and he was one of those that firmly believed in his work ethic. And I do think the work ethic itself is important. Um, but from a practice, just what we try to do is, you know, how do we put them in scenarios and practices that they that come up in a game that they feel like they're prepared for? And I had so many more questions, but you have to go. But WB Yates said this, too, and you said this on Twitter. In dreams begins responsibilities. What responsibilities lie behind your dreams for this baseball team? Well, it's a lot. Uh, it is. And, um, you know, my responsibility to them is, you know, first, uh, you know, be there for them. You know, um, I know sometimes, you know, it seems like the head coach's door is closed. My door is actually open. That's not my door behind me. That's actually a closet. So just so you know, but, uh, <laughs> you know, you want them to feel like they can come in and talk to you. Uh, secondly, I would say is, you know, my responsibility is to be prepared and then prepare them for not only their play on the field, but really it's more off the field. Um, from, uh, you know, their spirituality to their discipline, to their time management, to, uh, the people they hang around with, you know, all, all those things, because uh, these decisions that they make, they impact what's next. And so, uh, it's a big responsibility and, and it's why I say a lot of times I'm like, you know, game day is sometimes the easiest day because it's baseball. Right. And, uh, you know, uh, people at times are like, we don't want to bother you on game day. It's like, we well, are yes. not bother me on game day because now we're just playing mm -hmm. really where the, it's throughout the week that the responsibility is probably at its highest because of the things that we're trying to, uh, take care of, uh, be there for, right. Prepare all of those things. And so, um, but you know, I look at it this way, you know, I'm, uh, I do. You know, I'm a husband first and that's where, uh, you know, uh, my priority lies. And then I'm, then I'm daddy, you know, I'm daddy to you know, our three-year-old son. I am a uh, good to our nine month old baby girl. Uh, she uh, hasn't learned to say anything. You know, <laughs> I'm a daddy yet, but, you know, and then I'm a coach. And so I try to, I try to keep that in perspective as a coach, you know, and it's kind of like, you know, Friday, game doesn't go the way we want it to, you know, I, I can be angry all night or I can be like, no, you know, it's okay because, you know, I'm a husband and I don't need to bring this home. I'm, I'm daddy. My son had nothing to do with it. And that kind of helps uh, kind of balance this, you know, when you maybe really want to say something, but, you know, you don't with the team because you realize that uh, it's baseball, right? Uh, and here's one last thing I'll share. And this was a great perspective that, that uh, uh, Dana Cavalea gave me. Uh, Dana was with the New York Yankees and, you know, I'm, I'm talking to him. And again, I told you, I'm I really, I'm critical of myself. Um, and I was like, Dana, I said, you know, I'm working with the infielders and I find myself, you know, getting kind of loud with them, 
you know, and in particular, you know, if we're not catching the ball or we're not throwing the ball properly. And he goes, let me ask you something. He goes, do you think they're not trying to catch the ball? I was like, man, you just like, you got me like, no, I believe they're trying to catch the ball. So what, again, it goes back to, you know, well then be understanding of what comes out of your mouth. Right. Because as you and I talked earlier, we want them to kind of walk that line, but I if I push it too much. Now I create a negative and I don't want to create a negative. Right. And so uh, a lot of responsibility, um, but I'm grateful to have it. Um, I don't take it lightly. Uh, it's a blessing uh, and uh, and I enjoy it. And so, uh, you know, um, we'll just try to continue to make the best uh, decisions we can as we move through the, through this process. Coach Mark McMillan, thank you so much for your time. And again, welcome to the award-winning Quentin's Close-Ups. I appreciate it, Quentin. It's great to meet you, and, uh, and I enjoy uh, following you as well and appreciate uh, everything you do uh, for all of us here in Charleston. Oh, you're very welcome. Happy to do it.